Hello everyone, Uncle Mike, and I'm finally getting onto a project that I've put off for a bit, but I wanted to do for a while. I had a uh, poll up on my channel as to which CP CPU to use for this build, and the choice was between uh, a Phenom and an Athlon 2, and I'm doing a MAME multi-arcade machine emulator build. Now, I could use a modern slimline uh, Core i3 system, um, tuck it in a case so you never see it. I could use a Raspberry Pi, but instead I'm going circa early 2000s, um, anywhere from 2001 through 2005, and building this using an Asus M2N PV VM motherboard, which has built in NVIDIA G46 graphics, and it also does TV out, which when we get the build complete, will allow me to actually play the arcade games on an actual, not just a CRT monitor, but an actual television set, an actual old school TV set. And we'll get that going. That'll be in part two of the video. Right now though, we've got the motherboard and this motherboard has a dual core Athlon 64X2 5000 plus CPU. I need to check what BIOS version this motherboard is running in order to see if it's possible for me to run this Athlon 2 CPU that I did find in one of my earlier scrapyard find shorts. If not, I'm happy remaining, um, you know, keeping the um, Athlon 2 in place. I am going to use two two gigabyte sticks of DDR 400 dual channel RAM, which is essentially in DDR 800. And I'm going to use two sticks of that on the motherboard. And then I do plan to use Windows XP Pro X64. Why am I using that? Well, greatest compatibility across the board. Um, some would argue that uh, Windows 32, XP32, uh, would be a better bet with some of the older programs. But I may want to throw more memory on there someday or more powerful CPU, and I would get better performance um, on an eight gigabyte system. Uh, Windows 32 is really only addressing four gigs max. And that's just what we're gonna use today. The other thing I'm gonna do is I have a previous build of Windows XP um, 64 edition on this SATA hard drive and it's 120 gig. But what I wanna do after I pull the files off this hard drive that I have on here from the prior build, is I want to use this little sand disk that I dug out of a slimline netbook. And this is a 16 gig SATA little hard drive, little solid state hard drive. This is what I want to use for this build. And then to keep it small, just for the install, I'm just going to use this little slimline notebook DVD drive. And I'm going to use some hardware that I obtained right here on one of my other prior shorts where I showed how I ordered one of these and I wound up with a pack of 10. And these are nice, these slimline connectors on these little DVD drives, boom, just like that. And I've got a full-fledged optical drive. Just doesn't take up any space at all. We're going with an old school mouse to start, an old Logitech USB. And we're gonna put it in this, my Antec case, with an Antec, Antec True Power Trio, six, 650 watt power supply. And once we get it built, I'm going to use my X-Arcade controller. And this, this is one of the original X-Arcade controllers. And what makes it so original is it actually requires a PS2 keyboard connector in order to actually work 
it uh, USB adapters will not work with this. So we actually have the original adapter and all the cords that came with it. And this will be the controller on some older and even some slightly more modern from the era arcade games. And that'll be our build. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hook up this motherboard to the existing build hard drive, check the BIOS version as I boot, and if I need to, try and upgrade the BIOS through Windows XP to the most modern 5005, BIOS version 5005. Hopefully I don't smoke the motherboard and then see if that Athlon 2 works. So that's where we're at right now and let's get on with the build. And let's boot. And the BIOS version is 0801. So I'm a long way from the BIOS that I want. We'll let it boot into Windows XP 64. And that is a much older version of the BIOS than I suspected that I had. So I happen to have, and this is where computer hoarding always serves me well, I do happen to have the original CD-ROM that came with this motherboard for the support software that should allow me, with an image of the latest BIOS, to go ahead and flash it in a Windows environment. Always keep the old software, the old CDs whenever you can. And it would be helpful if I plugged the mouse in. Well, all right, we've downloaded the latest BIOS version for this motherboard on a USB flash drive. We are gonna throw it in there. And there it is, the 5005 bin. And this is the ASUS update for the motherboard BIOS. And where'd you go? So, we've already saved the current BIOS to a file. Now, let's go ahead and update from a file. And we'll point it in the right direction. Warning, the date of BIOS image is later than the current one. Please flash the BIOS using ASUS DOS utility if we still want to do this. Interesting. Please flash the BIOS using ASUS DOS utility if we still want to do this. Well, I guess we don't have a heck of a lot of choice, do we? So I'm going to have to go get a floppy drive, and we're going to have to do this a la old school, which we can do. We can do. All right, floppy drive it is. And we'll try the BIOS from DOS.
We made an MS-DOS boot disk in Windows XP and we copied over the BIOS flash and then it's the 5005 bin. And we'll see how well this goes for us. Kind of scary. I'm very fond of this motherboard. I don't know what I'd do if I host it. We'll back up our working BIOS. Hopefully we've got enough room on this disk. All right, never mind. All right. We're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. <sighs> I'll say it again, cross fingers. Although, worst case scenario, I should be able to go in and redo whatever I need to, because the old BIOS are online. This did have a little message in the BIOS download to remove the LAN ROM boot chip, but there's nothing of the sort on the motherboard. And remove floppy disk. And F1 to continue, and let's see what the boot looks like. Hey, version 505. Whew. Dear Lord, I don't want to do that all that often. Uh, let's go ahead and go into setup and see what this system looks like. So, all right. And let's go into, all right, so I recognize that, recognize that. I should go ahead and test it with this bad boy just to make sure that the uh, BIOS will recognize this SATA drive. And let's get into boot, boot device priority, remove a. That's better. All 
All right. Everything seems to be working okay. We should be able to switch the current CPU for this Athlon 2. And I am, get on there, fairly excited about doing that actually. Because I've never used one of these old school quad core AMD CPUs before. And, whoops, sorry fan. Hopefully the um, motherboard cooler will be sufficient. This is what came with my original AMD 64X2 chip that I had back in the day. It's a nice little stock cooler. Uh, we're gonna keep using that. What I want to do now is I'm gonna shut the system down and then I'm gonna boot and I'm gonna see if this little sand disk drive is recognized and if I can format it. And then we're probably just gonna redo the whole system on this and then get the, uh, get the main machine running. Well, right now everything uh, Windows XP 64-bit edition is up and running. I swapped out some more of the RAM. I had tried to start out with uh, two two gigabyte sticks. Uh, the computer did not like those. So I'm actually running two one gig sticks and two half gig sticks uh, for a total of three gig uh, DDR2667 RAM. And it seems happy enough with that. And that is enough memory speed for this Athlon 2. So, what I'm going to do is disconnect everything off this motherboard. We won't need that uh, DVD drive anymore. And we're just, all we're going to need is the, uh, just this little guy. I mean, that's all we're going to need is just our 16 gig sand disk. Let me just connect all the power from here and let's see if we can't trade out the CPU. See if we can't get us a better CPU in here. So like I said, this came with, this is my original heatsink and fan. Originally, back in the day, I had an Athlon 64 X2 4000. And right now there's a 5000 in there. And I haven't had this off in a while. But I say, let's go ahead, get the heat sink off and see about switching out the CPU. All right. There we go. There's the bottom of our heat sink. And let's get us a little alcohol. Get a little cleaning going on here. Up on our CPU. And there's our X2 5000. And put in our Athlon 2. And I knew I had one or two slightly bent pins on this. I think that was the only one. 
Well, I might have another one over here. Slightly bent. You pull them out of the scrapyard, you're going to get a couple of bent CPUs, uh, CPU pins. There we go. That fits nicely. Let's just give the surface of that a little wipe. I know I'm going to catch hell in the comments. Feel free to lambast me. But I'm actually right now pretty much out of my Arctic Silver. And I am stuck with some really old and potentially crappy silicone paste. So that combined with what remains on the actual heat sink should be enough, hopefully, to keep this thing cool. So let's get it back on there. Get it seated nicely, get everything connected. And these heat sinks are really easy. You put the tabs in, you lock them in place. Nothing could be easier. Athlon 2, X4, 640. Booyah! It looks like we did good. Unganged mode. Check some air, defaults loaded. Let's go ahead and run setup quick. And... CPU, Athlon 2, X4, 6400, C3 stepping. Auto memory. All right. So it's got us in single channel memory mode, 64 bit. I'll definitely have to check the memory configuration. But we should be able to boot up into Windows XP64 just fine. See if we show four cores. We'll work on the memory configuration. The next video will concentrate on our MAME build and the software and the controller. Boom, that was a fast boot. Finding a little bit of new hardware here, I'm surprised. And let's see what we've got. Athlon 2, X4, 640, 3 gig of RAM. We have a 256 megs portioned out to the onboard video. Our hardware. We are showing four processor cores. That's excellent. Everything else looks like it's pretty much working. We'll work again on that memory. I may have to go down to just two gigs to get it in the 128 bit. Um, I don't know if that's gonna make a huge difference just running the emulators. Anyone has a comment on that, let me know. It might not make a big deal. And Let's see. And we do have our four cores. So, I like it. Everything seems to be working thus far. We'll try and get the memory straightened out. And like I said, the next video, 
we'll concentrate on the MAME controller and the software and running it all on a standard CRT Zenith television circa uh, 1992. That is when I bought it brand new. Still have it, still works. Catch you on the next video. Thanks for joining.